Hey everyone, it's Chad HD, host of the Chad HD Show, which airs weekday mornings, 8.30 to 11 a.m. Central Time on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. Here in Lubbock, Texas, if you're outside of Lubbock, outside of the listening area, I invite you to listen online at KFYO.com. Well, we're back in studio after spending last week in Austin at the state capitol doing a few broadcasts and totally dominating uh, Texas legislature uh, coverage, especially uh, dominating other uh, radio stations who uh, don't even bother up showing uh, don't even bother showing up down to the uh, capital in Austin. So I'll have some stories from Austin uh, to talk about, but of course we'll also be taking a look back on the death of the Obamacare replacement bill uh, that uh, officially died on Friday, and uh, now the blame game continues in Washington D.C. as uh, some are blaming. President Donald Trump for the failure of uh, the GOP replacement bill. Others are blaming Paul Ryan and others are blaming the Freedom Caucus, uh, while others blame the moderate Republicans and even the Democrats. So who's really at blame here? Well, it's probably a little bit of all of the above. Uh, Paul Ryan and uh, the Republicans who came out with this Obamacare replacement plan, uh, I think they rushed this plan and they weren't able to ever sell it to the American people. Uh, it wasn't something that was an easy sell. It wasn't something that they could boil down. If you have to have three different buckets in order to uh, get a piece of legislation, one whole piece of legislation through, it's going to be difficult for people to understand what exactly you're doing when they just want one simple bill that will get rid of everything and completely flip uh, the the direction that uh, health care premiums are going. Uh, so I think it was a little difficult for people to understand. I don't think that Paul Ryan and uh, the Republicans sold it very well to the American people. I, I think I, I read one poll where only about 13, 15 percent of people actually approved of the idea, uh, there were 56% who were opposed and about 20-something percent that uh, comp- had no idea how they felt about the bill, which I think is actually a larger number of Americans um, that, that uh, have no idea how they felt. Because, again, you have the three different buckets. You don't know exactly how uh, bucket one is going to lower insurance premiums or bucket two or bucket three. And is bucket three ever going to get through when you don't have 60 votes right now? in the U.S. Senate. So it was a convoluted bill. Um, was it better than what we have right now if all three buckets were to go through? Absolutely. But it's, a, it's an if. It's a big if, right, if all three buckets were to go through. Um, so you have that. Uh, you have Paul Ryan, who uh, at first came out and said, here's the bill, this is what we're going to vote on, and he didn't seem to really want to negotiate with anybody. I think that was a mistake. Uh, eventually, when he when he knew that there were not the votes uh, in uh, in Congress, he knew he had to negotiate, but it was almost too late. They wanted to rush this thing out. Uh, President Trump is also to blame here. Uh, President Trump campaigned on winning. He campaigned on repealing Obamacare as soon as possible and putting in, uh, into place a better system that will still cover all Americans. Now, remember this, conservatives. Donald Trump ran on still, yes, repealing Obamacare, but also putting into place a system that would cover everybody. Now, I'm not sure exactly how you do that, uh, but that's what he ran on. This has never been a uh, totally repeal type of president. He's never been that guy. Uh, so, um, uh, you know, Trump getting getting out there and, and really going full-fledged behind uh, Paul Ryan and trying to sell this thing, I think he has a little egg on his face as well. The Freedom Caucus, um, for a lot of conservatives, they're going to be championing the, the Freedom Caucus. Uh, but the Freedom Caucus, in my mind, never seemed to want to work with Republican leadership or with the President of the United States and actually getting something done. And Donald Trump calling out the Freedom Caucus, I think, will actually hurt the Freedom Caucus in the future. Now, uh, what's going to happen? Uh, you know, I've seen some articles, I think Breitbart had an article up that, hey, this is all part of the art of the deal, that Donald Trump wanted this to fail so that way he could come back with his own plan. If that's true, okay, we'll see what happens. But remember this, uh, Donald Trump put uh, the full force of the White House uh, behind Paul Ryan's deal. Donald Trump has threatened the Freedom Caucus. 
Donald Trump has come out and said, this is the bill that needs to pass or else I'm walking away and we'll concentrate on something else. Uh, now, will Republicans continue to try and repeal Obamacare? I hope so. Uh, with uh, President Trump uh, out saying, hey, we'll just let Obamacare uh, fail and then we'll come in and we'll fix it after that. I think it's a bad move. Millions of Americans would be hurt by that. They'll continue to be hurt by pi- by paying outlandish premiums uh, for health care. That's not presidential. Waiting for something to implode is not presidential. Uh, Republicans have got to get on board. Uh, I agree with what Sean Hannity and others have said that what should have happened at the very beginning is House Republicans and, and, and Senate Republicans get together in a room, hammer out the details, and then have one big rollout where we say, hey, this is the Obamacare replacement deal. This is what we're going to do. All Republicans stand behind this, conservatives, moderates, uh, Republicans uh, all stand behind this, and we're ready for President Trump to sign this into law. Right now, I think all factions within the Republican Party have a little bit of egg on their face. Uh, will Trump come through? Will he be able to do something? It remains to be seen, but I think this does, in fact, hurt the administration for right now. Tune in to the Chad HD Show weekday mornings, 8.30 to 11 a.m. Central Time on News Talk 95.1 FM and 790 AM KFYO. Have a great day. We'll talk to you later on the show.